Rachit, one of my interns, has created this project that is now worthy of reviewing on stream. So I will go through the project uh, component by component and page by page. And this is the GitHub account of Rachit. So we are going to do some code review. And uh, I'm going to be helping some of you guys out with uh, design guidelines and coding guidelines. The first thing that I can see right here is, okay, let's uh, close this out and let's uh, start fresh. And for this component right here, what I will do is I'll go to inspect. I'll go to application. I'll click on local storage and I'll take all of this and uh, I will delete. Now I will refresh. And now we have a very fresh session we, that we are starting. Second of all, the contrasting on this application should be a little bit better. Like for this example, we are seeing a little bit shadow here, but we are not seeing the top part of or the left or the right part of the card, like where it is exactly. It is properly centered. I'll give it that. But given this a little bit of shadow right here and me not being able to tell if this is a select box, like hovering over it, it is not showing me the border, but if I hover, hover outside of it, then it disappears. It's kind of a little bit making me uneasy as it will make many people uneasy. So design guidelines is that the contrast on your website should be good enough so that colors complement each other, like black text on white background or white text on black background. Don't do sky blue text on white backgrounds. It will not be readable proper in a proper readable format and it actually strains the eyes. So contrasting with this, what's on your mind, discover trending dishes is fine. This is fine. Um, let's see the carousel. The carousel, uh, carousel component should actually automatically animate. But I'm talking ideal scenario. But if you are learning, it's fine. You can build a static carousel. But once it goes into production, once it goes to the customers, the customers should see the carousel moving. It creates a sort of um, personalized experience that, yeah, I even if I do nothing, I get presented. Like the website is trying to make efforts to show me content that is hidden away somewhere. Right now, I need to manually scroll like this. Third advice is that look at the gaps that is in the website right here. Your website should be a little bit compact when it comes to padding and everything. You should not add so much scroll to the website because you have to think about the mouse right here. You have to think about how much the user has to scroll right here to make an effort because every scroll, every click, every mouse movement is an effort that user is making to like your product. And you have to make it easy for them to minimize their clicks, their scroll length and their everything so that there is more chance that they will convert into a paying customer, right? Why is this uh, double rupees, Rachit? Uh, please let me know. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. But here's the rating. Here is the uh, 2.5 kilometers, 25 to 30 minutes. I I feel like uh, this this information of 25 to 30 minutes or 2.5 kilometers should be beneath uh, the the restaurant title because this is quite important for the customer to know. Very important information that should be displayed to the customer straight away. That hey, this this pizza, uh, this uh, image that you're liking, it's actually 2.5 kilometers away from you and it takes about 25 to 30 minutes. Not showing that information can actually put the user in confusion. Like, like I got confused. Maybe I will think that this restaurant is close by, but only after I hover, only after I click in, do I get to find out the details of the restaurant. So we should not on hover, but on the card itself, you should integrate that in information. It tells how expensive the place is. Yeah, somewhat, yeah. So another design guideline is that uh, open now, fire, this is so fire, free delivery, okay, great. Um, open now would also be helpful if you put in the times that this restaurant is opening and closing every day, the schedule. So that even if you see that this is open now, then you will know that, okay, it is 9.30 PM by 10, this closes, so I better uh, hurry and order now. So the brands Pizza Hut, if I click it, Pizza 20 Hut delivery, please URL encode and URL decode uh, your strings that you are passing. Please do that because special characters, dealing with special characters is a pretty big part of web dev. You don't know what kind of moron will come to your platform and they will insert all kind of Greek hieroglyphics and special symbols in. 
so it's your job as a developer to always sanitize and always uh, like you all escape or HTML, special characters escape the strings that you are printing so um so right here we are seeing that chicken burger is the only only thing that spice out has which is in 866 main street and edmonton alberta now see the problem with this uh, the problem with this formatting right here it says active what the uh, like what would the customer even know about a restaurant being active this text doesn't make any sense it should say open closed closing soon whatever right um closed today then it makes me even more confused like you're saying active and then you're saying closed today this is more confusing so pay some attention here and uh, how you want to display things second of all if it is in edmonton alberta and there is a google location pin right here and then another pin right here saying 866 main street then should this should be one line otherwise this component looks completely broken this looks like there should be something more here but there isn't right guidelines always make sure to look at it from a customer perspective it's easy for us i'm telling you we are developers that we are looking at richest pro richest project it's easy for us to sit here and judge it and uh, tell Rachid that you should be making these things. But when you make the project yourself is when you lose that perspective completely. This is when you need other people to step in and they need to tell you how to make it better. From Rachid's perspective, I think this is completely fine. But from our perspective, the customer, the user, the feedback will be way different. And this is something that you should be aware of as a developer, right? So here I get to choose the variant and uh, add to cart button uh, seems to be enabled for me. But the thing is that the add to cart button does not work. And why does it not work? I'll also tell you. It's because Rachid has made this application uh, to make the user log in when they want to add something to their cart. And that is something that again is a design guideline. Your design guidelines should be presentable in the front end. For example, this part that Rachid has built where if the user is not logged in then this should ideally say login to continue and when you log in then the system should be able to detect that this is the cart item that they automatically need to add to the cart after they log in so it decreases the number of clicks for a user so let's let's uh, refactor this from a college student perspective so what would you do while rendering this button, you will see that if the user is logged in or not, right? So you will show the login button. Somebody clicks the login button. They go to the login page. They enter the credentials or register. Then you will take them back to this page and they will have to add one more click where they will add this item to the card. And that by that process, you increased one click for the user. You increased the user's effort to be able to use your app. And this is where you can you can lose customers. So if you in, introduce some kind of intelligence in your app that somebody tried to add to cart this uh, this cart item while they were not logged in, but I'll remember that so that I'll wait for the user to log in and then in, immediately I'll add that item to the user's cart. So it reduces the effort. It makes the user's life simple. These are the kind of things that makes the difference for a college student versus a professional software engineer or a management person trying to give their advice, give, uh, trying to give feedback. How many apps I have built? I know for a fact that one thing that always uh, is a common trend among websites is that you want the user to uh, reduce their clicks, reduce their effort and make their life as simple as possible with the technology that you have in your hands. Another guideline. See, when I'm scrolling, the top component is going away. It should not. It just should not. The goal of the top component is to make the user aware of where they are and what are the options available for them at the top bar. When I scroll right here and let's say that there were four items or 10 items or 15 items. When I'm trying to add to cart, I'm seeing the button fail and I'm seeing the button say that you should log in. Then at that point, when I'm downwards towards the page, I don't know where to go because the login that you see on the top bar right here, it disappeared and that should not happen. It, it is a bad UX guideline. Another user guideline is that 
when you are creating you should be creating components that are aware of the page that they should be in for example when i am in the login page why do i need to see the login button once again i don't need to see it right i only need the register button to show up because the page is aware that it is in the login state second of all the page should not show the search bar right here because what good is the search bar right here because when we are trying to get the user to log in if i search something in this top bar right here and i click bbq shack australia then it takes me away from the login screen and that should not happen so you should always design your components and ask yourself do i really need this component in this page in this page in login page in account page in this page whatever so you are aware of what components you really need in in a page to show up so we will choose our variant uh, regular selected 250 and we will add to cart so it says add it to cart mm, the cart component doesn't really make the change it doesn't show me that one item is added second of all there is no quantity selector right here rachit so how many paneer butter masala do i need is really the question that you should be asking so i think you add only one uh, which is fine but uh, you should really provide a quantity selector so we can order bulk in at once we will click on cart and it says your cart and review and your delicious uh, selections so payment method hmm. this can actually see the quantity selector is right here this quantity selector should be in the previous page as well for all the products this part of the screen from this much to this much like 50 percent it should be showing the cart items one by one in a scrollable manner right this part of the screen the other right half should show the payment method selector and it should be showing uh, the operations related to payments so that it, it is easier for the people to see that on the right side here's my cart here's my payment or if the payment is done already i mean if they are using a coupon or whatever then the right side should split into uh, the address selector like where they want it to be uh, sent so you can put some uh, cash on delivery so it says place order cash on delivery Ooh, another thing uh, rachet so um will be reduced in orders if you have a subscription this text can be changed because this is not a good uh, good say good thing to say you should really tell people how much they will save if they have a subscription so place order it shouldn't really be an option because the third option is the shipping address where should it be shipped what if i am a customer on your app i have put in an address <clears throat> which i assume that you take an address before you register somebody but then i am at a friend's house and I want to use my account to order something, then there is no option for me right here. Oh, select delivery address. Oh, there is, there is, there is. Oh, but I can only select a bunch of delivery addresses. I can't add a new one, can I? No, I can't add a new one. That's it. Another feedback. So I should be able to add another delivery address right here. Address can, I know, I know, address can be created in profile, but there is no option to add one right here which is bad UX for the user. Now they have to click right here. They're gonna have to address, click on address. Man, it is so much clicks. So many clicks I have to do. Damn, bro, damn. Now I have to go back. I have to go back. Now I can select this is bad ux bro <laughs> let me select cash on delivery and i'll place so it just uh, placed the order it is saying preparing burger heaven delivery address is this subtotal this much discount this much delivery this much total this much delete order why would it be delete order uh, it should say cancel order think from the customer think from the customer okay fine so this is how much uh yeah this is the ux guideline for me 